All right, my friends, the time is now for an early access look at Total War Three Kingdoms. So a couple weeks back, Creative Assembly flew myself and several other content creators out to San Francisco, California, where we got the chance to play the first 30 turns of the campaign, which was definitely quite a bit of fun. So in the span of that time frame, I was able to do some open field battles, small settlement battles, as well as a small city battle. Now, I believe, I'm not 100% sure, but I believe there's one more threshold above this one. But anyways, the siege battles are quite a bit of fun. And the small settlement battle I fought, I believe, was in a mine. It was some sort of a agricultural province or a mine or something. And that was actually quite cool. They had some like terrain and some barricades and things like that. And this is something that I think uh, Three Kingdoms has really improved upon from Total War Warhammer. I think that the uh, the siege battles and the small settlement battles are actually very fun. For, for example, in Total War Warhammer, if you go and attack a small settlement or a city that doesn't have walls, it's just going to be like an open field battle. But in this one, you actually like attack a village or a mine or something like that. And it's pretty engaging. And I actually was like looking forward to some of the siege battles. It, it really brought me back to like Shogun when you're sieging like one of the big capitals or something. And they have these walls and multi-tiered conflict and things like that. So... That's one thing I'd like to articulate right away. Now, as far as this battle goes, I'm going to be leading the forces of Lu Bei. And something else to note is my army is much more powerful than my opponents. He has like one hero, I have three. And on top of that, uh, something to also note about this particular build, it's a very early access build, but the heroes are a little bit overpowered. So you're going to see uh, Zhang Fei just get in there and just massively route infantry. And But hopefully you guys will get a bit of a sense of like climbing walls and the siege mechanics and just the structure of the cities and all that. Anyways, so I do have control groups. So very similar to Total War Warhammer, uh, each hero comes with kind of a, a contingent. So for example, before I did the grouping, they would have had like uh, Lu Bei and he would have had four units with him. Each of them has like their own retinue. New. But when you control group them, you can split them up and make it more similar to uh, what you see in like Total War Warhammer. And before I attack the city, it gives you the option to make siege equipment and different things like that. So what I did is I actually tunneled under the city or tunneled under the wall and then uh, sapped it essentially. So the wall on the far side is actually broken and that's where I deployed Z uh, Zhang Fei. I was trying to get my cab and him in there and I was hoping the AI wouldn't defend it, but the, uh, the AI did recognize that I had a bit of a some shenanigans going on over there and you can see they have a pretty substantial force. But anyways, the main army of uh, Lu Bei is actually gonna be a militia army. So when you look at the cam uh, campaign mechanics, he gets a massive upkeep cost reduction for all of them. I think it's like 100% because he doesn't start with a city. It's very similar to like a horde army like Chaos or the Beastmen. However, the Beastmen and Chaos can't then create an empire. But with Lu Bei, you don't start with a full empire or uh, empire at all. You have to capture them. And this is actually the first city I captured, which I then made my capital. So you can see here, we're going to be sending some troops over the wall. We have our archers shooting very similar control movements to Total War Warhammer. You saw that I just did a movement there where I split my forces up. We're just kind of, uh, you know, raining fire into the city. And I'm hoping that the AI will just kind of uh, like basically think that I had retreated with this main force with uh, Zhang Fei over there while uh, Lu Bei and uh, Guan Yu are going to be attacking the wall. So the heroes can climb the walls as well, but they were riding horses. So what I had to do is I had to ride them up to the wall and then I can dismount them. So I think that's a really cool feature in this game is that the heroes and lords, and that's something that's a little bit frustrating like in Total War, because there's going to be times where if you pick a flying lord, right, you, you might just instantly lose simply because... Uh, it's on a mountain, you can't take it off. So you can see here I land my heroes. They're going to be attacking, and these are just low tier infantry. These are Saber Militia, which are basically like uh, men at arms from the tone if you're looking for a comparison. Very low tier stuff. My archers are going to be raining some substantial fire over the walls. In my infantry, I'm just going to be uh, climbing up the walls as well. So they kind of throw these like grappling hook things over the walls, and that's how they do it. But now the back door is open, so Zhang Fei is going to be leading his forces here. And also, ahead of time, apologies for my pronunciations, they're not very good. And remember that this is going to be a relatively one-sided battle simply because my army was vastly stronger than that of the, uh, I believe this was the Yellow Turban Rebellion that I was taking the city from. But we're going to be riding through the back walls here. We were able to destroy it with the uh, sapping in the beginning. And my opponent is actually leaving his uh, his general in the middle. So the AI does that a little bit. They stagger their forces and this is a vast city. So we didn't have the resources to kind of defend every angle. And you can see all my troops up here on the walls are going to be fighting some of the defenders. And from there, they're going to be falling down. Uh, some of my forces are already in the main street. There's a bit of a skirmish going on. So I do have Lu Bei here in the front. And just for... Mm, there's Guan Yu there. Just karate chopping some of those guys. He's, he's incredibly powerful. He's essentially like the god of war. So Guan Yu, uh, who is basically my champion character, he's going to be the best duelist. Zhang Fei is more of like a vanguard class, which I believe is what it's called. And, and remember, I'm just focusing on the battle. I want to show you guys the mechanics here. If you're looking... For, there's going to be just tons of videos from other influencers that highlight the uh, character classes and things like that. And I'll probably do one as well, but again, the main focal point of my channel is battle. So you can see here I'm going to be climbing the walls. The defender's falling pretty quickly here. My heroes are in the city, and I actually get a little bit sloppy there, uh, sending Guan Yu over on his own, but it doesn't really matter. It's mostly archers there, and I'm going to be pathing through as well. So you can see you can do the dragging where you right-click and drag, and it'll form a formation for you. So Zhang Fei has some really powerful abilities, and there are some very heavy RPG elements to this game. For example, uh, each hero is going to have like a tech tree. It's kind of similar to Shogun in a way, but Zhang Fei has his own uh, tech tree where you can get different shouts and roars and, and just kind of uh, battle attributes. 
And something else to notice is there's also a bunch of small barricades throughout the city. So if you want to like hold a particular street, it's a little bit tough because obviously this is pre-recorded footage, so I can't like zoom in and show you right now, which I was like trying to do throughout the battle, but I was also trying to get a good engagement. So it was a little bit tricky. But, but yeah, there's barricades and it's really fun. There was actually some battles where I had to defend my city. Uh, it was against a very pitiful force, so it wasn't really worth showing, but it, I was able to like hold a barricade and you can see the center actually has like four entryways, which makes for some really cool last stands. And I, I really hope this is something that we see in future renditions of uh, Total War Warhammer in the third game. But anyways, archers in the back, uh, getting pretty good arcs of fire over the wall. Zhang Fei is going on a very, I actually couldn't ride directly through because you can see those barriers right there with the little yellow icons kind of, uh, uh, I couldn't, I would have had to like dismount and then jump over it with my horseman, which is like a little bit laborious. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to like ride all the way around and, and do my thing here. So the street fighting is still underway here. We're going after some of the archers. My militia army doing pretty good. We definitely had a numbers advantage due to the nature of our force. This was about five or 10 turns in and uh, something else on along the lines of RPG elements. So this is going to be more of like a podcast rather than a battle format, but the RPG elements of the game, uh, there's a lot of itemization for characters. So like in Total War Warhammer, if you go into your character, you can give them magical items. In this one, you can really custom tailor your heroes to suit different purposes. If you want them to be better versus Cav, you can give them different items. And here you can see is my opponent's, uh, my opponent's general. So he's going to be coming in to duel Zhang Fei, who's a pretty powerful duelist. I mean, he's a beast. So Zhang Fei is engaged in single combat over there. You can see he's going to be going fisticuffs. And uh, yeah, he's going to be probably able to win that fight. The Cav are going to charge in just to intercept the infantry force. And we're going to be pulling back to him a little bit of cycle charging. So... I was trying to play a little bit more of an optimized battle here, but Zhang Fei is going to be dueling over there. And you can see there is a bounce of power bar, um, and he, he won pretty quickly. The general I was fighting was very inexperienced and kind of low power compared to him. So Zhang Fei is going to be getting in there and uh, definitely having some, uh, having some fun. Also throughout the city, you can see there's various capture points, much like Total War Warhammer or uh, you know, previous renditions of the game. Once you capture a tower, it'll stop shooting and providing the defensive capability. So you, if you capture a gatehouse, for example, you can then just march your troops through the gate. Very cool stuff there, but yeah, you can see the AI is forming a bit of a last stand here in the center. I'm going to be organizing my troops here, and yeah, I have different control groups. So one of them is mainly going to be infantry, one is for the cav, and the other ones are for the archers. So yeah, it's 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 very similar. For anyone coming from Total War Warhammer, I'm sure a lot of you guys on my channel have, it's going to be relatively, it'll feel fluid to you. It's not going to be like super confusing or anything. But yeah, my opponent does have some cav that are a little bit stronger than my militia cav. So I kind of have the lower tier stuff, but Jean Fein here is an absolute beast. He has an ability, I believe it's called the Bellowing Roar. You can see I'm about to activate it here. It's somewhere in there. I may have already used it earlier, but he gives 100% morale debuff. So basically any one unit that's fighting him, he can actually tank their morale and put them down like almost nothing, which is really fun. But this is something that really brought back memories of like my 13, no, not 13, I was like in my 20s, but you know, playing those early siege battles and getting these like big cinematic clashes in the streets, like fighting over a street, my opponent's like falling back, trying to hold the staircase as my militia hordes are just like rushing in. I have Lu Bei and my other characters coming in. My archers, of course, a little bit late to the party because they had to scale the walls and they fought most of the battle from the outside of the city, but my forces are going to be pouring in and trying to take the final bastion of my opponent's stronghold. It's a little bit tricky here, I have to admit, to kind of tell the difference between my troops and my opponents, simply because the color schemes for these uh, two armies are, were very, very similar, but it, it's still, you know, it, it wasn't as hard here, but in watching it back in the replay, it's a little bit tricky to flex it. So there's a bit of a grindy fight here, but again, I have the hero advantage. Uh, I'm going to be sending in Guan Yu and Liu Bei. Uh, Liu Bei is more of kind of a commander type character. He's not that great, but he has encouragement auras as well as like a shout that kind of keeps the troops fighting. You don't want to be having him here. And also this is in romance mode for anyone wondering. So the heroes are basically, it's like Total War Warhammer more so. The heroes are just these linebackers that can solo hundreds of troops. Whereas in the, uh, the other mode, it's going to be a little bit more realistic. So here comes Zhang Fei. He's going to be running in there, just bull rushing and yeah, he's definitely a beast. He's probably one of my favorite characters. He has a big cleaving attack with that, uh, that I forget what that weapon is, but I'll probably be showing you guys in another video. Here. But he's going to be fighting on his own and uh, just basically cycle charging with the cav while he holds people in place. And you can also see at the bottom of the character's uh, tooltips there, you can see their HP bar. So, or I guess, yeah, like right below their portraits there, if you're looking right now at Liu Bei and Guan Yu, you can see that there's like an orb, like a green orb. So that's their HP pool. So you can see that. Uh, Zhang Fei is a little bit more beat up. He's been fighting some hard battles, but the rest of my army is just going to be pushing through to the center of the city, which is uh, pretty neat. My opponent charging in with some of the Saber Cav, or I should say the AI, not my opponent. My archers have gotten a pretty good position out here on the flanks. They're going to be hanging, just getting some Overwatch fire shooting into my opponent's defensive pocket. But yeah, I had a pretty sizable advantage here. I have the remnants of my forces, a couple spear infantry coming over here, but I really do like the campaign for Lu Bei. I think it might be one of the first ones I do the campaign. The, you know, the whole Peach Garden Oath and having these like three characters, uh, these Blood Brothers kind of uh, fighting together is, uh, well, I don't know if they're actually, if it's like, I, and by Blood Brothers, I mean not actual brothers, but kind of like bounded by this oath. Uh, they have like 
really good loyalty to one another, which is something I noticed in the campaign, because actually characters can like betray each other, but these guys seem to be pretty tight knit, so you're not gonna have to worry too much. Like with someone like Lu Bu, right? Who's like really just a wild oh, you know, a wild horse there. But anyways, this is the end of the battle. We're gonna be kind of cleaving through here. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this one and kind of some of the notes we articulated here. I will be putting up another video. We do have limitations on how long they can be, but this will be the, uh, the first one. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this battle and stay tuned for more Three Kingdoms content. Have an excellent night, guys, and take care.